It also has got a responsibility to ensure that only drugs which are effective and safe come to the market and remain on the market. The MHRA maintains it's one of the finest regulators in the world. But that boast has been seriously undermined by your complaints about Siroxat. And you still think that the drug could be safe for children? Absolutely, it could be. We haven't got a license in children yet. I feel sorry for anybody who has had any side effects uh, um, from treatment or indeed has experienced the terrible symptoms of depression. We are trying to help people. The evidence, however, is clear. These medicines are not linked with suicide. These medicines are not linked with an increased rate of self-harm. Uh, uh, change in our thinking about uh, Siroxat in children. Remember, Siroxat has never been licensed in children. It has never been licensed in children at all. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, practitioners have, on their own behest, uh, have used it extensively. Our, our best evidence is that some 7,000 children a year uh, were, or children and adolescents, were receiving Siroxat. This increase is small. It's rather similar to, if you imagine, um, a school of, of more than a thousand children, all of whom are deeply troubled by, uh, by depression, um, less than a, a small class size would have these suicidal thoughts uh, or, or attempts. So it's a small but important uh, signal. Did GlaxoSmithKline act promptly in getting this information to you? This is a matter which we are investigating at the present time. Uh, there is an investigation going on being conducted by the uh, one of this, the inspection and enforcement sector of the agency and with lawyers to decide uh, whether or not they did. Do you think two years is an acceptable delay? Uh, that is what is being investigated by the lawyers at the present time. But during that time, we both know that children were being prescribed a drug which we now know is harmful. What, what do you say to them and to their parents about why that was allowed to happen. When we received the information, we acted with great rapidity. I we, understand we act, that. We acted but within two weeks of receiving the information. I understand that, but why were you not in a position to get that information from them earlier? Did you not know that they were doing studies in children? That is what is under investigation at the present time. Might criminal charges be brought then? That is a possibility. That is a matter which is under investigation just now whether or not there was uh, evidence at that time in different age groups which we did not have access to. Well, th there was information. Did you just not analyse it at the time? Or was it not presented to you? This is a matter which is under investigation at the present time, whether or not the evidence was presented, whether it was analysed and what happened to it. This is part of the ongoing investigation. It's appeared on your website since April, but why isn't it in the patient information leaflet? The patient information leaflet will be altered when the current review is, uh, is complete, which will be towards the end of this year. But that's quite a delay. I mean, you've known this information for a while. Why are you waiting to tell people? No, in, in fact, in the, in the, on the, as you say, on the website, this information is available. It is available... Uh, yes, but patients don't tend to read the MHRA website. Why is it not on the patient information leaflet? Well, it, the, the, there are several aspects of the patient information leaflet which are currently being uh, revamped at the present time, and this, is, this will be one of them. So you're but absolutely confident that Do Dr Healy is wrong on this issue and will be shown to be wrong? Yes, absolutely. Not only that, but Dr Healy has made the same claims about a range of other medicines. He made the same claims about Prozac. He made the same claims about um, uh, a, a range of other uh, SSRIs. On every occasion, he has been found to be wrong. They do not cause suicide. They do not cause suicidal thoughts in adults. There is a, a very large database. They might cause them in young adults. They do cause them in children, but they absolutely, definitely don't in, cause them in, in people over 30. In the adult population, the drugs are effective. There are many, many studies to show that. There are in over 300 studies which have been analysed and studies using epidemiological databases. The drugs do not cause suicide. They do not cause suicidal thoughts.
there is a period of time when the drug does not act. It takes a period of three or four weeks before it acts. But it's in your bloodstream immediately. But you, it you're suggesting it has no effect on it, you. It, is, it, it has no beneficial effect for some three or four but weeks. But it might have and, a detrimental and effect. And during that period of time, uh, there is a, a, a risk of suicide which remains from the period as before. And that is the period when uh, the, the uh, practitioner must monitor the patient very carefully. It is very important that since safety is uh, an issue which is built up as more experience is gained with the drug, uh, that safety is kept under review and this is why uh, we insist on post-marketing surveillance of a drug which means that its safety is kept under review uh, during its lifetime. When information like this comes in, this is investigated. The way that we invest, we, firstly we investigate the individual reports, and then we and take. And how do you do that? You, you go back to the doctor and yes, follow it up. Yes, yes. That they, happened in all of these cases. Not in all of them. At, in the appropriate, uh, in the appropriate cases, this is uh, these patients are followed up. The follow-up rate uh, for yellow card reports is some 48, 49 percent. There was a, a, a difference in views as to whether the agency had sat on information and Richard felt, I think, that the agency had sat on information in those. And we were quite clear, the agency is quite clear, it had not sat on information in those. You're not quite getting Richard Brooks' point, are you, that patients need to know this information as soon as it becomes available. It is a it's matter, their health. It, it is a matter of regulatory and, and, and practical judgment as to when information should be transmitted. When it is in the public's interest that information should be transmitted rapidly, we will do it. Do you regret the fact that Richard Brooke was threatened with legal action for revealing any of this? That, that, was, uh, I, 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 that was unfortunate. I, I, I regret Richard leaving the committee because he was a very valuable member of the expert working group and we certainly hope to uh, maintain contacts with Richard and to obtain the benefit of his advice. They were warned from the time the drug was licensed that there was a risk of withdrawal. This has been mentioned in every review, every publication coming from the, 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 the Committee on Safety and Medicines, the problem of withdrawal, that has been publicised in patient information leaflets uh, that there is a problem with withdrawal. It takes time for clinical trial evidence to become available. It takes 12 years to find out that a quarter of people taking one of the most widely prescribed antidepressants will suffer withdrawal problems. The problem of is that is that your position? The problem of withdrawal was highlighted early on. We were unable to give precise figures. As time has Why gone on, were you unable to? You're supposed to protect the public. You're supposed to listen to the public. Why were you unable to give a figure? because we did not have reliable information available to us on which to base advice on figures.